Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets project in Practical Sheets. Today we're going to a habit tracker. What do I mean? In the last years, maybe 10, 20 years, there's been a lot of focus in the productivity landscape about habits and the importance of habit and the 21 day rule and all that stuff. In theory, a habit is a thing that you do without thinking about it, but actually it's not that easy to do it. And it's not true that in 21 days, your brain automatically will say, ah, okay, so I'm going to start doing this automatically all day. So it doesn't work like this. So a lot of people have written books and developed systems for tracking the tasks we want to turn into habits. This is a good way to try to include them in our daily routine. And maybe with time, they will become habits. But at the beginning, and I'm not talking about 21 days, it may be one, two, three, five years. A very good method is to keep track of what habits you're doing. For example, Jerry Seinfeld has a very, it's not his method, but it became very popular with him, a method that is called the chain of habits. So that every day you just, you just put a check on the habit you want to develop, reading a book, meditating, doing exercise, calling my mother, whatever. And you put a check and the first day it's just going to be one day, but after a month, you're going to have a chain of 30 days. And the game is called don't break the chain. So psychologically, you want to keep the chain as long as it's, it is possible. So I developed for myself, <laughs> yes, I'm a productivity nerd, a simple system to keep track of my habits and of uh, looking at my chains and also looking at how many days have passed without doing a, a specific task that I want to become a habit. So this is what I wanted to do today with you, just show you my system and maybe it can be useful for, for someone. So first we're going to have the task. Let's say we want to meditate, even if it's one minute a day, we want to exercise. We want to read five pages of a book and maybe I want to write a journal. I don't know. It doesn't have to be these transcendent things. It may be write a post for my blog or whatever. So this is my task. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to put each date in a column. I'm not a big fan of growing my columns. And I prefer, and, and any data analyst will tell you this, that we prefer to have it in a rows, to have many, many rows and not that many columns. But in this case, I think it works really well visually and functionally to have it in our columns. So let's begin with any date. Let's say we start January 1, 2021. We're just going to put some checkbox here. I'm going to say data validation, select checkbox. I like to do it this way. It's easier from the insert menu. Here you can have insert. Here you have the checkbox, but I prefer to do it this way because I like to use my custom cell values. And here I'm going to say done. And here I'll leave it blank. And I'm going to save. Okay, so it's very easy. I just wake up on the 1st of January and say, I did my meditation. I read my five pages. Maybe I didn't make the time to exercise or to write the journal. So the next day, I'm not going to do it on my right because I want to keep track of today. So right now I only have one day. And if I put here January 2nd at the beginning, it will be very good. But when I'm at February, then I will always have to move right. So I prefer to do it backwards to add a new column. And you can see that magically the new column brings my data validation. So it's very nice. And I could put my new date would be January 2. And again, see, okay, I meditated. Maybe I, I did exercise today and I didn't do anything more. And then the next day and the next day and the next day. So again, when I have a lot of dates, 10, 20, 30, 
I will have always track my current date will be in my column B. Okay. So if I move here, I can have this. I can delete these rows from below. Maybe I can write some more tasks here. But for now, I'm going to delete all these rows because this will be a column heavy sheet, not a row heavy sheet. They're going to be in the future. When I have filled this for about a year, I'm going to have 350, 360 columns to my right, but my rows will keep very low. Okay, let's say I am very good at meditating, but in the exercise department, I wasn't very good, but maybe I have read in the last three days. So this is how I'm looking at my habits right now. What I want to do is to have one column here. I'm going to delete this. And this column is going to be called my chains or a current chain, let's call it. And I want to add my chain. So in this case, it's very easy. It's six. Here is one because I'm, I'm not counting my checks. I want to count the checks up until the next blank. So here is one, here is three, and here is zero. So this is my, my main challenge right now. How do I do this with a formula? One way of doing it is to do a match function. Let's delete this. And what the match function does is to look for a specific value in a range I tell it. And here I, I may want to leave my blank value in something. This is a case where my blank value may prove useful. So I'm going to go again to my data validation. I'm going to change this blank for a not done, for example. And what I'm going to do is to do a match. What I'm going to look in my match function, the first thing I'm going to do is to tell it what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for this not done. Here I'm going to uncheck this first so that I do find it. So not done. Where I'm going to look for it, I'm going to look for it here in this range. And that's it. And finally, I'm going to put a zero here. And it found it here in the number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. So if I subtract one, then I know that my chain is five. And I'm going to drag down this formula and it looks about right. My current chain here is five. My current chain here is one. My current chain here is three and here is zero. So it looks good. Again, it found the first occurrence of the word not done in a column. In this case, the column is zero because we started here and then it subtracted one from it. So it looks very good. The problem with this function, with this formula is that when I add one and I check it, it doesn't work. Why? Because it is always starting in here. Okay, there are many ways to do it. Let's say one way could be to fixing this column D that right now it should be C. We can fix this column, only this column, putting, let's put it here, looks bigger. We can put a dollar sign before the C. Let's see if this works. I'm going to add a new column. And it doesn't work. It still changes to the D when I add a new column. So this doesn't work. The other method is using the indirect function. Indirect function is a way to having parts of this range direction or range address be fixed. How do I do it? For example, I could say here indirect. Let, let's do a quick test. I'm going in indirect. I'm going to 
always look for the value in my C2 cell. Okay, here is done. If I add a new column, you can see that this doesn't change. This always will remain C2 because this magic of indirect is that the reference is a text that will not change. So this is what I need so that my C will always remain the column C. But my row two, I do want to change it so I can drag down my formula. I want that these two row will be three and four and five and six. So how do I do this? So what I'm going to do is to put this E2, J2 inside an indirect function, but it's not E2, actually it's C2. Inside quotation marks, I'm going to put C2 to J2. I'm going to close my quotation marks and close my parentheses. And it's working right now. If I put a check, here it works. If I leave out a check, it's two. So it's working perfectly. The thing is that if I drag this down, it will always be referring to the row two. So I want it to refer to my current row. So how uh, the same as I did this example, I'm going to leave these two as my current row. So this I do it with a concatenation. I'm going to close my C, do an ampersand, the, my current row, and then another concatenation, my quotation signs. Then I put this colon, I close it, and other concatenation. Then I'm going to leave this J as a constant, another concatenation, and again, my row function. And I can close this. So then if I drag this down, it will work for all of my rows. Now I can see my current chain. The thing is that this will always be up to J. So if I start adding new columns, this will always just count to J. So if I, if I have a chain that is more than seven, eight, 10, it won't work because this is always looking at J. So a very simple solution is just to delete this J and leave the column open. So it will always look for the last column. It's, it's as if I am doing something here, I'm going to put a range that starts in C7 and goes up to seven. This means that it will always look for the last column that it finds, okay? So now it's working beautifully. So that's it. That's it what I wanted to do today. There are a lot of things we could do next. If you like the video, then you just tell me and we continue the series. We could do, for example, a very similar thing with the days without doing it, because here I can have an alert saying, okay, you've been six days without doing this habit or this task. The other thing we could do is that we could create a button or a menu that automatically creates my new date. It adds the column and then puts the, the next date. This could also work. We could also have a new row where it tells me how many tasks have I made this day or the percentage of completion. When there are only four, it looks very nice. But when I have, in my case, I have like 20 or 30. So it's good to know that I'm 50% or 60% or something like that. What I can do is to here put a conditional formatting, a very simple conditional formatting, just to look which are my biggest chains. So I'm going to do a color scale. And this is the one from white to green. The, the, the maximum will be in green and the minimum will be in white or maybe even in red. So here I can easily see that my best chain is the meditation one and my worst chain is the writer journal one. So this is it. I hope you like it. It's been very useful for me. Again, I have uh, included some ordering macros and the creation of new dates macros. So if you like the video, we could do this in the next opportunity.
So as always, you can find the template in the Patreon page and you can ask me anything in the comments. And lastly, you can subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so that you are aware of new videos each week. Thank you so much. See you next time.